Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Manu Issue ACCA Classes. So in this video, I am discussing one of the queries that uh, my viewer have. She has facing challenge while solving the question of consolidation and this is from the SBR, right? So before discussing the question or going to the detail in the question, I have thought to discuss the first concept because in SBR, it's very important to have a good grip over the standard and the concept while solving the question so that's why I have been decided to solve uh, I mean to clear the concept uh, before moving to the question then we will later on come to other uh, later on we will discuss the question so if uh, if you guys also having any queries any doubt that you want me to discuss in the detail please um, message me on any of my social media id i have kept the link of all in the description box just go through the uh, link and ask your queries get it solved as soon as possible right okay so in today video i am discussing the first concept of consolidation then we will discuss the question in the same video or in the coming up video okay so from the consolidation what do you guys understand that one company acquiring other company right but if one company is acquiring other company the company might be holding certain percentage of their equity and the uh while in, in SPR, there are different standards for different percentages of equity. We will discuss and come to those, those points later on. But first thing is that in consolidation, what we think, okay, one company is acquiring other company. But in acquiring, there might be certain percentage. It's not as straightforward as we are thinking. There are many things or many stand, uh, I mean, uh, um, many uh, standards that we need to be understand right before uh, solving any question so ab uh, question is right uh, question here is now that whether you are holding how much percentage it might be more than 50 percent less than 50 percent or 20 to 50 percent between less than 20 10 percent there could be any percentage that company can acquire if they are having uh, if they are buying the share of any company right but Let's uh, first discuss the case of if company is acquiring more than 50%. So what happened if company is acquiring more than 50%? So we can say a company is uh, having control over other company. But uh, we cannot say uh, literally uh, like uh, in one line, okay, the company is having more than 50%. So they are having the control. But no, there are few more things that we need to consider before deciding whether company is actually having control or not. By generally, we know, okay, company might have been, might. I'm using the word might. So if any company that's having a 50% of shareholding in other company or more than 50% shareholding in another company, we can generally say that they might are having control, but it's not sure 100% that they will have a control. We need to consider few more things before uh, coming to the conclusion that company control other company. So what are that, that first thing that we need to consider whether there is control or not? These three things need to be considered. If investor, that means company who is acquiring other company has power over investing. Okay, and uh, other thing is inv investor is exposed or has right to variable return uh, from its involvement with the investee. And third one is investor has ability to affect those returns through his power over the investee. So basically these three things that we need to consider, if these three uh, things are present in that situation, we can say, okay, company is having control over other company. Okay, so power over investee uh, means what? Here are the few more things that we need to consider. That means company ha can exercise a majority of voting right in the investing. If company is holding more than 50%, that's fine. But it should be voting right. If uh, Those shares should be voting right. If not, then they are out. Okay? Out in the sense means they are not having control. Okay? So, other thing for the power over investor that we need to consider is contractual agreement between investor and other parties. 
if uh, investor uh, suppose uh, if a is having uh, 60% and rest 40% is owned by small small investor so how it depends how the contractual agreement is between the investor and the other parties holding potentially voting right such as convertible loan that are currently capable of being exercised so voting right means uh, if uh, companies having convertible loan that can be uh, uh, i mean converted into the future into the equity share that also need to be considered and nature of relation between with an uh, nature of investor relationship with other party that may enable investor to exercise control over the investee if uh, suppose a company is having a 60% 70% holding in one uh, or acquired 70 and 60% of the holding and rest 30% is owned by the other small small investor in that case i could i could uh, go to those 30 percent uh, investor and uh, we can uh, like uh जैसे होता है ना कि मतलब एक होके कुछ डिसीजन लेना वी कैन चेंज द थिंग्स उस टाइप का कुछ कर सकते हैं वो भी नेचर कंसीडर करना पड़ेगा पावर ओवर इन्वेस्टिंग के लिए राइट सो पावर ओवर इन्वेस्टिंग के लिए ये हमको चार पॉइंट देखना है और दूसरा हमको क्या देखना है कंट्रोल में विदर इन्वेस्टर इज एक्सपोज और हैज राइट टू वेरियबल रिटर्न फ्रॉम द इन्वॉल्वमेंट विद द इन्वेस्टी मतलब सपोज अब जो इन्वेस्टी है मतलब जो कंपनी एक्वायर किया गया है सपोज ए एक्वायर किया बी को तो यार बी हो गया इन्वेस्टी सो इफ इन बी बोल रहा है कि मैं आपको सौ डिविडेंट दूंगा अब ए बोलेगा नहीं नहीं मुझे एक से बीस चाहिए है ना तो इन दैट केस मतलब कि उसके पास राइट right है वेरियबल रिटर्न देने मतलब रिटर्न को भी इन्फ्लुएंस करने का ठीक है यहाँ पे नीचे वाले पॉइंट में भी ये बात बोला गया है इन्वेस्टर हैज एबिलिटी टू एफेक्ट दो रिटर्न थ्रू इस पावर ओवर इन्वेस्टिंग अब मतलब कि वो इन्वॉल्व हो जाएगा अगर उसकी बात नहीं मानी तो मान लो उसका बीओडी को चेंज कर देगा कुछ भी कर देगा मतलब दे हैव पावर टू डू समथिंग राइट सो इन दैट केस वो रिटर्न को भी एफेक्ट करेगा और कितना रिटर्न चाहिए वो खुद डिसाइड करेगा वो भी एक कंट्रोल का हिंट देता है राइट सो माई कंसर्न इज इफ यू आर थिंकिंग ओके कंपनी कंट्रोल अदर कंपनी और नॉट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू चेक आउट द परसेंटेज होल्डिंग परसेंटेज इन जनरल मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट गिव्स ए सिग्नल दैट यू आर कंपनी है कंट्रोल ओवर द अदर बट वी नीड टू कंसिडर दिस पॉइंट एंड फॉर दिस पॉइंट फॉर पावर ओवर इन्वेस्ट अगेन वी नीड टू कंसिडर दिस इफ इन द क्वेश्चन डेमेंशन दे हैव पावर ओवर इन्वेस्ट एंड देन दैट्स क्लियर वी नीड वी डोंट नीड टू गो फॉर द फर्दर डिटेल्स इफ नॉट देन वी नीड टू चेक इट आउट दिस पॉइंट एज वेल ओके सो दिस इज इन रिलेशन टू द कंट्रोल नाउ For the consolidation, I as I said, there are few standard that we need to be uh, familiar with, and one of them is IFRS 10. So what IFRS 10 says to prepare a consolidated financial statement. If one company have a control over other company, then in that case, company need to prepare a consolidated financial statement, right? So here I have kept in note uh, what the uh, that preparation of consolidated financial statement means. Here means to pre. Present asset, liability, equity, income, and expense. Again. Okay. So present the asset, liability, equity, income, expense, and cash flow of parent and its subsidiary as if they were single economic entity. Well, let's understand from the parent and subsidiary. Parent means the company who control other entity, and subsidiary means who are being controlled by other. so if uh, they are having the control then obviously there will be a parent subsidiary relation and ifrs 10 says that they are, okay parent have need to prepare a consolidated financial statement that means their pnl their balance sheet their cash flow that need to show asset liability income expense and cash flow of the both the entity as they were a single entity right okay but it it uh, it don't it don't say that okay uh, parent are free from to, uh, to prepare their its own individual financial statement they will prepare their individual financial statement but they need to prepare consolidated financial statement as well okay okay so now if they say to prepare a consolidated finance statement then we need to do a five walking and this is the from the my first lecture that in the financial accounting i have been said that in case of consolidation that we need to do a five walking but there were basic things in uh, fr there are more advanced thing and in sbi there are more advanced things right so you need to prepare the five walking it's very important and in sbi don't worry they won't test your five walking each of the five walking in the one question they might ask you any particular one 
okay so first one is the group structure okay so group structure means so first working is that we need to draw a group structure that means uh what percentage controlled by parent of subsidiaries right suppose uh if it is this will be useful in case a parent is having uh, uh more than one subsidiary right so here we will draw a structure that a company a owns suppose 55 percent holding of b okay at the same time a hold uh uh, 45% of C, 20% of D. So in that case, we need to uh, draw a group structure and this working is useful to decide the status of the investment. Whether it's a subsidiary, whether it's associate, whether it's a joint venture, we will come to that point later on, but it will help you to, help you to decide the what is the status of the investment and in which standard to be applied right next working that we are having is of net asset calculation so basically this working sets out the fair value of subsidiary identifiable net asset at the acquisition date as well as at the reporting date so <coughs> at the acquisition date and at the reporting date means uh, if uh, like uh, reporting date means like uh, the accounting period or year in of the parents right so we will consider the share capital and this is all of the subsidiary not of the parents we are just doing this calculation of the subsidiary so we will consider share capital share premium it will be same that's why i don't have kept any figure here because in the post acquisition means the difference of these two okay Return earning it might be changed because at the time of acquisition there might be different return on uh, return earning and after the acquisition there might have certain profit that has been earned by subsidiary we need to add it back and difference is called as post acquisition profit so again we need to consider devaluation surplus or deficit we will uh, and then again consider fair value adjustment at the date of acquisition or the re reserves and surplus in case of depreciation we also need to consider at the reporting date but not at the acquisition depreciation written back and amortization unrealized profit and then we will add up the total so i will explain why we are doing this walking but uh, before that i need to explain one more concept of this perf this part will be present in the working to calculation if subsidiary sell to the parents so if there is intercompany transaction suppose parent is selling some goods or services to the subsidiary subsidiary is selling so any um, goods or services to the parent in that case for uh, we need to adjust any profit or margin that they have been charged but if subsidy is selling uh, to the parent in that case the perf will be in the walking too if parent is selling to the subsidy the whatever the perf calculation that we will do we will uh, adjust it through the walking five we will come to that later on okay so now the fair value of uh, subsidy net asset at the acquisition date are used in the calculation of walking three so now we will move to the walking three so uh, whatever the net asset calculation that we did on the date of acquisition it will be uh, used in the calculation of walking tree we will come to the uh, this point uh, uh, very soon and the moment of the asset net asset since acquisition is used to calculate non controlling interest and group reserve so basically this moment uh, they are talking about it will be helpful in the walking four and the five let's move to the walking three Walking three, okay. So it's a calculation for the goodwill. So to calculate the goodwill, we need to consider the fair value of purchase consideration. That means, so if uh, we have uh, paid cash, issue shares, issue any bond, loan note, we will consider everything, but at the fair value. That NCI at acquisition. If we are holding the thirty percent, the rest of the uh, rest of thirty. We if we are holding seventy percent, the rest thirty percent will be hold by the other investor. They are called as NCI. That means non controlling interest. So there might be certain value of those NCI at the acquisition date that we need to add it back, and this will give the total value of the share capital of parent. I mean subsidiary sorry and then we will deduct the fair value of identifiable net asset at acquisition that's uh, from the walking to uh, this acquisition total we will take and deduct from the total uh, value 
and this will give us the goodwill value at the acquisition but uh, we need to find out its value at the reporting date that's why we need to consider the impairment and this will give the goodwill to the consolidated uh, uh, statement of financial position so okay but remember if the full goodwill method is adopted then nci value is equal to fair value of nci at the date of acquisition and if proportionate goodwill method is adopted then nci value is per percentage of the fair value of subsidiary net asset at acquisition as per walking to so it depends which method the question has been asked we need to be carefully consider okay moving to the working four in working four we do calculation for the nci that means non controlling interest so we will consider non controlling value at nci value at acquisition as we have taken in the goodwill this one and uh, then we will uh, add nci share of post acquisition profit as per ac acquisition to the difference of those two amount post acquisition we will consider nci percentage and add it to the uh, here and then we will add or less nci share of post acquisition revaluation surplus or deficit okay and then we will um, less nci uh, and uh, share of impairment if we are adopting fair value method this will give the nci at the reporting date so um, this will give the nci at the reporting date okay so one more thing uh, you might be uh, thinking that why i have been taken this revaluation surplus or deficit in the working for because we had already considered the revaluation surplus and deficit so be uh, remember that this will consider at the acquisition date and acquisition date and it will be same at the reporting date that's why we have not considered any difference if at the reporting date revaluation surplus is different in that case we will consider the nci percentage of those revaluation surplus or deficit and we will add or less here okay so this is for the nci calculation now step 2 and sorry step 5 this is for the group return earning right so here we will take parent return earning 100% then we will add p percentage of subsidiary post acquisition profit as we have discussed earlier this post acquisition profit is a portion between the parent's percentage and nci percentage so parent percentage will be considered in the working 5 and we will add back the p associate of uh, co associate company post acquisition profit if parent is also having investment in the associate that is ias 28 we will come to that later on and we will need to add back the post acquisition profit here as well then we will uh, then the regarding revaluation surplus and deficit if we are considering nci percentage of uh, uh, revaluation surplus or deficit in working four then we need to consider in the working five but the parent percentage so here we will add or less the parent percentage of revaluation surplus or deficit then we will deduct parent share of impairment uh, and then regarding the perp as i said if parent company sell to the subsidiary then the perp need to adjust it from the working 5 if subsidiary sell to the parent in that case it should be adjusted from the working 2 so here unwinding discount uh, and add or less and thing that affect p company profit or loss so it will give you total a uh, total return earning so i am just giving overall view it doesn't mean the question will ask to each and everything you need to look in the scenario what the things that uh, are given and uh, you need to calculate the uh, any calculation accordingly right so this is for the consolidation and uh, if we are preparing consolidation statement that what we need to consider and before moving to the ias 28 okay let's discuss first then we will move to the other point so if parent is having its holding percentage between 20 to 50% means less than 50% more than 20% in that case uh, it is considered to be the associate but again we need to consider few thing i think i forgot to <coughs> note down here okay so let's discuss for the ias 28 uh, so as i said if parent is holding uh, the between the 
20 to 50 percent of the holding in the subsidiary that we need to think okay it might be associate so for that again it's not sure that we can say okay it's a uh, associate we need to check out the few condition and the criteria so let's go through that so regarding associate it's an entity over which investor has a significant influence and which is neither a subsidiary or nor a an interest in the joint venture so significant uh, influence means more than 20% share but not uh, more than 50% means less than 50% okay so now there are few more things if you will find the term significant influence if the question says okay the uh, parent have a significant influence over the other company in that case you can consider okay they might be associate but if they are not clear not straightforward in that case we need to consider more and that is if significant in uh, if we need to figure out whether they are having significant influence or not that means uh, we need to consider whether they have power to participate in the financial or operating decision policy decision of an investee but not a control or joint control over those policy but means they are they are power they have power to participate or influence any decision of regarding the financial or operating policy the following are the example of significant influence like you can find this thing in the um, textbook as well so here first is the representation on the board of the investor they might we have uh, the represent representation on the board of director so participation in the policy decision making so they have given a power to participate in the policy decision making so they can only influence but they cannot control right so for control we, uh, we already have learned the point above right and uh, C is material transaction between the investor and the investee, interchange of person, uh, management personal and provision of essential technical information. Okay, so I guess 28 requires if these conditions are met, then uh, met, then uh, parent need to follow equity accounting method for their associate to count their associate in the books of account. And so what are they? for investment in the associate we will consider the cost of investment in the associate purchase consideration then we will add group share of post acquisition profit here you can find how we have been calculated and list and uh, amount received as dividend if we are getting dividend from the associate then we cannot consider that we need to deduct it from the investment in the associate and less any amount written off in the investment or impairment then again less any p parent percentage of unrealized profit if the p is a seller parent is a seller and less p percent percentage of access depression on the fair value adjustment while solving the question we will uh, uh, look to the calculation but for now just understand this this uh, this is these are the way to calculate the investment in the associate value and it will be shown in the sofp consolidated sofp and regarding the share of profit uh, of associate company it is very straightforward so these are for the IAS 28 I have just uh, roughly explained so to so that you guys can recall and while solving the question it will be easy okay there are few more concepts that I need to uh, clarify before moving to the question but uh, let it be uh, let me explain the more important one for now we can stop here because video is already half an hour long so we can continue in the coming up video so please guys stay tuned with my channel for more video like this and again you have in case you are having any queries or doubt please do let me know i will try my best to solve your queries as soon as possible